only the second time the Vice actually got through for Impaler. The thing is, I think that both Mixon and Limited have actually got pretty good champion pools. They've both played mm. a lot of different champions, and I quite like their styles of support. So, mm. uh, you know, deciding to prioritize the Thresh is a little surprising to me. Annie and Leona are still up, and we'll have to see how wow. they go. That's even more impressive. They really, 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 really so wanted Caitlyn. This is because Forgiven's only two champions he's played is Caitlyn and Lucian. Yes. They feel they may be putting Forgiven in a bad place here. However, Yasuo would be an interesting first pick. I'm not too sure they're going to go with that one. Instead, it's going to be Jinx and Annie. So I'm a little bit nervous about this first pick, Caitlyn, for a couple of reasons. What the Super Hot crew are saying is that the only person that they are afraid of really here is Forgiven. They yeah. feel that if they take Forgiven away, we praised Forgiven, uh, his positioning and the stats that he's had in the game so far. Having Jinx, I still prefer as an AD carry, especially when you add that burst of Annie as well. Well, I mean, I managed to speak to Amazing this morning, and I was just like, you know, we were singing your praises yesterday with your 85% kill participation, and then you got completely camped and dumped on Z. So for this game, can you actually just dump on me in the in the opening part? So maybe we, if we start giving some harsh words to Amazing, he'll start performing very well in this game, motivate him into it, I don't know. But we're seeing the jungler choice potentially here for Impaler. The fact that Vi is on the cards and they haven't gone straight for it tells me that they believe maybe there's a counter to it that Copenhagen Wolves know. Yeah, I think, you know, the fact that Impaler is talking so much right now, you can see him on the left of your screen, this has to be the discussion point. What do they want to take? What champion are they going to lock in? I love the Ziggs as mm. far as your wave clear is concerned. It's good defensively, it's good offensively. And very importantly, in conjunction with Pantheon, you can control the side lanes and the waves so incredibly efficiently. Well, look at this. The Zig's locking in there. You've got the Mega Inferno Bomb, followed by the Grand Skyfall. Everything all piling into one position. I want a Leona. They could get a Leona. I was just about to say, they could get a Leona alongside that. It would be a scary, scary combo. We just saw it in action, of course, with the Grand Skyfall and the Solar Flare last game. But currently, they are heading towards that Yasuo again. Is this going to be a mid laner up against Ziggs? If it is Yasuo locked in, we may even see like a Wukong in the jungle. Somebody mm -hmm. that can have that sort of interaction. I know in the Challenger series, we actually seen the Trundle Pillar, if put down on top of somebody, can actually throw somebody up. Or alternatively, Vi, guaranteed, there's going to be the displacement. If she knocks anybody else along the way, hey, you get bonus damage. Well, you get the Assault and Battery combined with the Tibbers. Yep. That's a scary combo for that bottom lane. Chompers may even go down and completely lock someone up. More Ganna support. That's something we have certainly seen before. Will Mixer go for it? Yeah, Vander actually played it. He was the first one that yep. used it as the support in the LCS. Not necessarily the Leona, mm. which I think I would have preferred. Yeah, that was going to say, I'm not believing really <laughs> that. I, I think I would have preferred the Leona. It's a little bit of a cleaner initiation. You're not reliant on like a, a flash soul shackles from Morgana or a, a, a stray dark binding. But nevertheless, still going to offer a lot of CC, a lot of AoE. And if Copenhagen Wolves are out spreading away, it allows Ziggs, Pantheon, and Caitlyn to single. So I quite like that idea, as long as they get a little bit ahead, that the that Copenhagen Wolves are afraid of that stun. Dr. Mundo is going to get locked in. That means he is going to be the tanky front man. And if you remember, cast your mind back to yesterday in Paler's game, he actually built fairly tanky on that Pantheon. So maybe he's just seen uh, the the work of Sven Skeren in the last game going, that's what I want. I want to get that Black Cleaver in there. I want to be doing all the damage. And it's interesting that they favor the Dr. Mundo over the likes of Renekton or Trundle in the setup. And considering how squishy the rest of their targets are, maybe Impaler wants to build damage, having that super tank works. It worked for Soaz yesterday. That's how how he got to that unkillable position, you know, use that ultimate and a, a nice combination. But as we see, once again, Trundle being the sort of tank killer in that top lane. Yeah, it's what Youngbook played yesterday and he played it pretty damn well against Soaz, but as was proven, he didn't quite get it. Again, looks like they may both be running teleport this time around. Of course, we saw Youngbook trying to split push, trying to help out the walls, and that was what was working for them. Super Hot Crew looked like they may try and do it, but yesterday, they were lacking the coordination when they tried to do this tactic. Yeah, it didn't really work out. They got caught a little bit. Like, Fnatic got a lot of towers basically uncontested because the Wolves weren't grouped up to defend efficiently. We'll see if this combination is going to work a little bit more in their favor. I think having the very clear initiation of the Vi plus Yasuo plus Annie is definitely going to help the Wolves out. But they cannot afford to jump onto a team that's just going to then soul shackles and stun them up. So a lot of coordination required here for the Copenhagen Wolves. Well, there you see the fantastic stage. We are live in Cologne Studios. And as the champions do ready themselves up, let's see how you guys at home have called this game. According to LOLesports.com, 77% of you 
I think the Copenhagen Wolves will be howling in victory. I feel like that's pretty accurate. I would say, you know, three three out of four people saying that. Mm -hmm. The Wolves have put up very good fights. Super Hot Crew have had flashes of brilliance. Yeah. But they haven't necessarily challenged a lot of the bigger names. So we'll see how this works out. It's definitely not over in picks and bands. Both of these teams have got great compositions. Well, we pointed out yesterday as well that four members of the Super Hot Crew are actually in the lowest KDA of all the teams. But we did just hear from Candy Panda that actually he believes the Super Hot Crew may be better in the, the opening lane phase. Yeah, you know, the, the, the Super Hot Crew have got an aggressive laning phase. The problem for them comes in that they, the lead that they get or any advantage they gain, they don't garner, they don't push further down the line. So we'll have to see how this match plays out. They've definitely got the option to be very aggressive with that Ziggs and the Pantheon. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Super Hot Crew as the blue team up against the Copenhagen Wolves as the red team. Top to bottom for the Wolves. We'll see how that... Yasuo works out, and again, it's a. I'm trying to think whether it's another new champion for Kaltar or whether he's played this one already. I'm starting to lose track because he really is differing his champion pool throughout the LCS. Kaltar's one of the most diverse mid laners so far this split. Which, played. by the way, he actually loves because when he previously played, he was only ever known for Zyra. Yes, and his Zyra is still good. Not good enough to beat Alexic's car Zix, though. That was a bit yeah. of a misplay in uh, week one, if memory serves. We're given is going to get a little bit of damage down into Mr. Riles, but it's the, the, the typical defensive start from basically all of the individual lanes. Nobody wanting to be invaded upon. There is a sweeping lens on the side of Amazing, so we may see Copenhagen Wolves group up in the next 20 or 30 seconds and maybe challenge for a buff. We'll just have to see. I believe Unlimited but has possibly built up the stun as well. Looking at his mana pool more importantly and seeing whether he's actually gone for that stun. He has. He has, so maybe, maybe we will see some form of invade from the Copenhagen Wolves here. We'll see whether they go for anything. It, it's going to be interesting. If Unlimited was going to go for an invade, I would almost <laughs> anticipate him moving up along with Amazing so they can make use of that sweeping lens. But as it stands, you actually see we, it's going to be Kaltod making the first move. 1.30 is the time your trinkets become available for those wards. And we tend to see the vision and people backing away. Instant reply. <laughs> Double trinket. Sweeping lens by Amazing though was picked up early on and he will take down that first ward. So that's going to clear out the vision. We'll see whether Impaler remember against SK Gaming. Impaler invaded that red buff a lot. Yeah, there's a stun available, and Mixer, oh, he's toying with his life. He's stunned! He's stunned on towards Mixer. Have they got enough damage? They're going to put a lot down. Oh, the Dark Pointing completely missing. And now Forgiven switched across to Wister Morales, trying to pull down those rockets. Dodges, does get caught by the Piltover Peacemaker, though. Oh, that was so close. I thought Unlimited was going to go in. He actually went a little bit late. Dark Pointing on Unlimited Dark now. Binding does catch him this time around. Piltover Peacemaker will be back available. Will he catch it? Yes, he will. The Ignite! And another shot lands. Mr. Rales once again getting first blood. I think Unlimited overstated the strength of that initial trade. Didn't anticipate that Dark Binding from the bush. And Mr. Rales and Mixer making work with that first blood. We said Morgana wants to get ahead, and she already is. Dark Binding not available just yet. Gonna throw it out. Good oh, flash. Forces the flash from Forgiven, and that is both flashes now down in the bottom lane for Copenhagen Wolves. This is a fantastic start for Super Hot Crew. So, first pick, Caitlyn. Gives you first blood in the game and your support Morgana definitely working out. Super Hot Crew's picks and bans theory crafting and then implementation in game has been brilliant so far and we'll see if they can keep this one up. This is the lane we've got to keep our eye on though because once we get closer to level 6, Countard may actually be able to just chunk down Moops pretty hard. Yeah, Moops has got to be scared a little bit because he's going to have to use simply those bombs or the flash as and when it's available to escape, because if Kaltar gets on him, he will certainly be able to lay down a lot of damage. You can see he keeps building up that whirlwind and just throwing it out, trying to catch on to moves. Now, one of the things we've seen from these Yasuo mid laners is they put the wind wall down. That's the Yasuo W, and it blocks any projectiles that come through. All of the Ziggs bombs are going to just be melted by that wall. So as long as Kaltar is quick enough on his reactions, he can actually mitigate a lot of the poke and a lot of the damage that moves will be putting down on him. And of course, he hasn't got mana to worry about. It simply builds up by his movement at the moment. Though Youngbuck up against Mimer in that top lane. This is a Mundo versus Trundle. It's a lane we have started to see developing quite standard in the LCS so far. Yeah, and you know, in terms of this lane, it's, it's Youngbuck's going to need some levels before he can you know, start to challenge Mimer's Mundo. And once he gets that subjugate up, he's going to be able to steal a lot of those defensive statistics. The one thing we are seeing with both of them in those teleports, Whoever's going to have the better uh, teleport ganks or teleport objective plays is going to help their, their teams. And Young Buck, we've seen how effective he can be with it uh, in the game yesterday. And more impressively, Countard is keeping ahead in terms of CS over Moops. Moops being pressured onto the tower on a Ziggs. A Ziggs, one of the strongest pushes you can get in that mid lane. 
From what we've been seeing, though, it looks like Moops is being a bit reserved with his spell usage. He's not using it to farm, and, you know, Kautar has just been playing quite safe. Amazing stood right over a ward, so Mime is going to be able to back away fairly simply. But the question here is stun on Kautar. They've caught him. Flash jump on towards him. Oh, the pack didn't land, and neither did the Heartseeker. So Kautar flashing out of that one. Now it's going to be the top lane. Amazing coming in. He's going to try and channel and get the knock up on towards Mime. He will not quite get it. The flash comes out, but Mime is in. Have to make a long run here. That red buff will try and slow him down. It actually has run out on Amazing now. So maybe they won't quite have the damage. A good cleaver coming out from Mime. Makes the escape. Yeah, very nicely done. Kautar's in a little bit of trouble in mid. All the mines he's going to have to run across them. Now he will have to back off. He was trying to hang around as long as possible. But Moops has managed to steal himself a victory in that mid lane. Yeah, I also feel like Kautar's wind wall was a little awkward. He threw the wind wall towards Pantheon during the previous gank. And Pantheon's just going to jump through it with his stun anyway. So, got to be a little bit more... Uh, calculated with how he uses that ability in future. As it stands, Impaler is now moving in, stealing away this this wolf camp. And it's been a good day for Jungle Pantheon so far. Uh, very impressive early games out of both of the, the the players that we've seen. Yeah, it takes away the uh, large wolf and backs away. Gonna go buy himself a couple of items. We'll see whether how he progresses in his item build. Whether we see him similar to Transgaron or what he did yesterday. We're starting to go a little bit more tanky after a few damage items. Moops, well, can't back away while you're in lane when there's Kaltard on Yasuo, and that will force him to back off. Yeah, Kaltard's just trying to interrupt Moops as much as possible. He's grabbed himself that Avarice Blade. Thanks to Yasuo's passive, he's gonna have double the critical hit percentage. And of course, all the last hits are just gonna help him get to that static shift just all that sooner. I think M Moops is, he overstated the strength of Kaltard in those early stages. I feel like if he'd managed to bait out the wind wall and then put more poke down, would have helped him out. Well, cancelling the attack animation and not taking down the Siege Minion is not going to help you get that gold advantage which Countard kind of needs right now. He has got the CS advantage still built up though, and it is a double Doran's Ring along with an Amp Tome being picked up by Moops. Yeah, we'll see how this the next few minutes goes. Now that Yasuo is going to get closer to 6, and Amazing is very close to getting that Assault and Battery uh, uh, unlocked. I'm a little concerned for Moops because if he gets chased down by Impaler, the the range on Yasuo's final breath is ultimate, if I recall, is about 1,300 units. It's basically the length of a Caitlyn uh, ace in the hole. So that's a massive range that you can follow somebody through, even if they flash or use that satchel charge. Yeah, there's a big, big range. Don't forget the combo of Super Hawk. We haven't seen it yet. We are starting to hit level 6, so, so we'll start seeing whether that Grand Skyfall paired with the Mega Inferno Bomb, paired with maybe Mixer's Dark Binding, it could all happen. And that's what we're going to be looking for. Yeah, Impaler's come in from behind. Kautar's dove forward. He's dove forward, immediately had to dash away. The mine's not quite catching him, though. And he does manage to zap away there. Amazing is with him, and now they're looking to go for an invade on blue. Yeah, as long as there's minions or things to dash to, Kautar can just keep using that E, the sweeping blade, to dash through things. Moops and Impaler thinking about a fight, definitely toying with it. This is quite brave. It's going to become a three-on-three -three very, very quickly, and I think it's smart to Copenhagen Wolves to back away. Kautar dodges the cleaver, I haven't started the fight just yet. Good damage onto Mima there already. Maybe going to try and force the ultimate out of him. They are sticking around for this one. They want to try and challenge. And more importantly, they want to stop Moops getting this because a Ziggs without blue buff will be a lot harder to lane with. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it doesn't work out for the Copenhagen Wolves, though. They didn't really have the vision to, to pick this fight. That pink ward in the bush for Super Hawk Crew allows them to secure this safely. And I think if Copenhagen Wolves are going to pick that fight, it was going to be blind, and they had no ultimate from Amazing. So they didn't have the tools or the power required to actually battle there. We're, of course, seeing the difference in lane for Mr. Rales. Of course, he got that first blood, got that BF sword on early up against only a double Dorans for Forgiven. So really going to be bullying out this lane now, I feel, this Caitlyn and Morgana combo. Yeah, it's a massive difference. Mr. Rales got 140 AD to the 99 of Forgiven right now. So for every single individual auto attack, that's a massive amount to make up for. Also, they have hit level 6 just before the Copenhagen Wolves, but I don't really think they're going to go for any sort of tower dive right now. So Mr. Rales and Mixer just looking to gain control and try to mitigate as much uh, farm from Forgiven as possible. Of course, Amazing with Yasuo in the mid lane, which does mean that Amazing will take that blue buff and then we'll see whether he goes for a kills. And of course, that assault and battery is available. Looks like he's heading down to the bottom. Yasuo trying to step off. That may actually give them a little warning. Yeah, with, with uh, Amazing having his ultimate now as well, they're trying to defend this tower. It's one hit away from going down. And unfortunately for Copenhagen Wolves, Subar crew don't stick around. So we see Amazing are going to kill the white behind him. Impaler's got Grand Skyfall. They may even consider a tower dive. Kill the tower, tower dive from behind. But there's a counter gank. So whoever gets more damage quicker is going to have the advantage. And 
Look for the Grand Skyfall. I think that's going to be the, the starting point. And Limited's gone in. Flash Tibbers, Grand Skyfall was coming in, but it actually got cancelled out there. Not too sure why he done that, but that may be the death of them. An amazing teleporting in there. We'll catch on towards it. Does manage to get one down. He will he get a second? Didn't teleport in. Of course, he came running down here. It's going to be Mima getting caught. He was the one that teleported in. He's going to get caught out. Is it going to be enough? Mix of one. Can they get a second kill? Youngbug, will he have that pillar back up and available in a second? No, the cooldown was not available. And now Moops has come here to just help defend. They end up trading uh, just the one kill secured, and it was four forgiven. Thanks to the use of that Super Mega Death Rocket. A little bit of a sloppy fight from everybody. They threw everything into it, but Unlimited is basically the man of that fight. He flashed in, got uh, uh, the Tibbers down, if I recall, and stunned both Mr. Rolls and Mixer, giving Copenhagen Wolves the foot up in that battle. And you just got to wonder, it's simply about that timing. The fact that Impaler was like, I'm going to grand score for behind. That's good. It's go now. Oh, damn. Tibbers is down there, and he cancelled it and just ran down instead. Maybe, maybe if it had gone down there and helped out, who knows. But nevertheless, they got themselves a dragon, and that is more than a kill. Yeah, definitely. The tower and the dragon, it ends up being in favor of Super Hockey. They get a lot more global gold and uh, global objectives. There's the Mega Inferno bomb we were talking about. Just great wave clear. Moops is just making his way back to that mid lane. And it's going to be difficult for Copenhagen Wolves to split push or to play the map when Ziggs is going to be able to just wave clear so effectively. Youngbook, of course, had himself some time in this top lane while Mima's going off to buy. Sunfire Cave's going to be coming out for Mima shortly, building up towards that one. Meanwhile, Youngbuck going for the same way he did yesterday towards that Blade of the Ring. Yeah, it's sort of actually the standard build on Trundle. We have seen a, a Ravenous Hydra, but I, I don't know. I think I prefer the Blade of the Ring King. He gets a lot of tanky stats that he can steal, and the kill potential is very, very high. Now Mixer on this Morgana. We've seen him doing very well at level 1 and level 2. His Soul Shackles is just becoming available in the next few minutes, and I think the strength of those Soul Shackles in team fights will be apparent if they can split the Copenhagen Wolves up, because that's what Super Hakuru want to do. Force the Wolves to spread apart, and then use the damage of their single target champions to find kills. Forgiven being given the uh, large Wraith there, or the White, whichever you prefer to call it. Now he has got the BF Sword, but again, you can see he's behind in builds. Mr. Rao is bloodthirst to complete it, and now looking to try and lane wait and maybe set something they're just going to keep that lane frozen and they want to force forgiven and limited to be well away from a tower yeah truthfully the tools of jinx even though she's a little behind in damage will actually basically balance out with that bloodthirster because of all the additional uh, uh, burst that she can put down opening of wolves right now grouped up in this mid lane trying to push the wave down into the tower but they're not committing to actually attacking the tower due to both of them being melee champions so a little bit afraid of being caught out they're actually making their way bottom ultimates are available for both amazing and for kowtard well super hot crew read that one coming a mile away mixer just gone up and placed that ward in there now we're seeing of course they are sat on top of it so not going to be learning anything bomb rolls in <laughs> says yeah we know you're there guys just go away and leave the bottom lane alone i always wonder why players do that i always think why not leave them there yeah. Played, played just leave them there a little bit longer, yeah. Just, just as a thought. But nevertheless, Moops gets a little bit of additional damage. Counter returns to this mid lane, throws out that Steel Tempest. A little bit of damage onto Moops, but he doesn't have a lot of additional attack damage built up right now. And Super Hard Crystal with a small gold lead. And we're just seeing Counter on that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, maybe not knowing Whoops. the full <laughs> distance of that sweeping blade. <laughs> oh, that's all. It's nice to see three pro players still make the errors because everybody else at home that's watching is like, yeah, I've done that before. <laughs> but as it stands, Blue Wolf is back up again. Super Hot Crew coming in for this one. Doesn't look like it's going to get contested this time around by the Wolves. Oh, Super Mega Death Rock is, is going it? out. It should be secured. The bang! No, that was not close. Not enough splash damage onto Impaler. Not it's very, very close, though. That was so close. If that had been like half a second later, Fro Forgiven may have been able to pick it up. But nice play. That was blind as well, actually. There's no vision in that blue buff pit for the Copenhagen Wolves. So that was very good timing on the side of Forgiven. Um, in terms of our supports, there's just seen the coin being picked up now for Mixer. That's the first GP10 item as both of the supports rush that Sightstone, wanting the HP and wanting the additional vision that's garnered from that item. Well, of course, the Talisman helps out on the... Uh Morgana support as well. Gives him that mobility to try and get in there with that uh, ultimate running. Try and 
help out if you can get the talisman built up. Of course, at the moment, it's only at the Ancient Coin. We've got a couple of stages to go yet. Pink Ward being cleared out by my man. He's going to back off, complete that Sunfire Cape. Blade of the Rune King has just been completed by Young Buck in the top lane as well. I feel like Super Hot Crew have got some very early sweeping lenses right now. They've only got one tower down. They picked up one dragon, but three of the members on their team have gone for sweepers. And I'm actually pretty sure this is more sweepers at this early stage of the game than we've seen in many of the other LCS games. So we'll see how they make use of it if they want to go for invades or if they want to have defensive uh, lens clears. Another interesting thing, blue buff given to Forgiven. That was donated to Forgiven. Maybe to try and you know help him get more of those rocket splash damage down or more super megas. We'll see how it works out. Well, that rocket is back up. We'll see whether he does try and make use of it. Of course, we did see in the previous game Candy Panda firing one from the bottom of the map and getting that kill on. Froggen in the mid lane. As it stands, it looks like it may well be towards the top that they are heading. The Wolves want to go on towards my map. And as you say and that, they, back away they decide to back away. They stepped away. over a wall, the pings went down and went, nope, let's I think back off. The, the slower pace of the game right now is, is a testament as both teams not wanting to make a mistake, not wanting to commit to a play that's overly aggressive because they can respond fairly well. You know, you've got the, the Globals and Super Hot Crew with that Grand Skyfall and with the uh, Mega Inferno Bomb. It is quite scary. So we'll see how the gank plays out. Amazing. Sitting in that top tri bush, Impaler has read him fairly well. He was in the mid lane a moment ago, now he's making his way to the top lane. We'll see how the tower guy goes. Gonna back away. Yeah, he's gonna back away. I mean, we've saw it in the previous game with Lee Tin trying to go in on Shook, trying to help out, but uh, Impaler on Pantheon is a very strong champion. Dragon up in 40 seconds. Kaltar just gonna launch by Moops and eating a bomb as well. Three members of Super Hot Crew stacking up on this mid lane turret. Yeah, with Dragon up in 30 seconds, now I'm even less, uh, I think it's less likely for teams to make an aggressive play unless they catch someone completely out of position. So Dragon's up in 30. Vision right now is in favor of the Copenhagen Wolves. They've got a little more wards in that area and I think they've got slightly better position to roam down. But teleports are both up for uh, Mima as well as Youngbuck. So if the fight were to break out, those two could join in very, very quickly. Yeah, the Wolves are ready to go full defensive duty, but they've actually left Mr. Rallis to just free farm down that bottom lane. So he's managed to shove that wave in and now making his way up towards this Dragon Pit area. Dragon now up, and he's going to get started off by the Wolves. And Super Hot grew a little bit out of position. They tried the pincer move yesterday to much... Disarray. Disarray, I think, is one <laughs> way of calling it without being too harsh. It was a, a pretty bad move. And this time they choose wisely not to go for it. Yeah, and actually, because of that, Copenhagen Walls being a little closer to the Dragon, Super Hot Crew have now started on this inner turret. Amazing, he's got in! They've channeled on towards Impaler, but again, you see the Dark Shield coming out. The so Mega Death Rocket's going to get launched out, but is it going to be enough? It's Impaler that gets one kill. That's a second for Mixer. Now Youngbuck's in trouble. He's going to get focused down, and Super Hot Crew doing work. Ace in the hole! Guess we'll it. get another kill down as well. forgiven has got to run. He just took a cleaver to the backside. They may push on this one. Dark finding flash from Mixer. Not quite going to find his target. Forgiven having to flash out the danger. So they get the tower. They get three kills. And now they're on the inner turret as well. They're not stopping. They're going to keep on shoving through here. Forgiven's doing what he can. Throwing out that zap. But that's an inner turret down. A great, great execution from Super Hot Crew. So two things in that particular fight. Number one, Amazing started with that assault and battery. Well, the rest of the team weren't necessarily close enough to respond. The next thing on that is the final breath from Yasuo was not actually used. Kaltard still has his spell available, it didn't knock anybody up, didn't get that extra damage down, and he wasn't a factor. So the fight was over before it really began, thanks to Super Haku picking up that kill, and a massive gold lead right now. Two towers, a dragon, and three kills. Giant advantage, and you know, if you cast your mind back to the discussions between these two, Super Hot Crew talking about the great uh, decisiveness that Copenhagen Wolves have, and Honestly, Copenhagen Wars had nothing nice to say about the Super Hot Crew, but right now the Super Hot Crew is showing them what decisions should be made in a game. Now, I also want to talk about how impactful that Morgana is. Because of the Soul Shackles and the, the fact that it takes time to channel to get that stun, if Young Buck, Amazing, and Counter Art, being melee champions, dive into a fight, the moment three of them are in range, Mixer hits the R and says, come on, stay around, I dare you, because you're going to get stunned, you're going to get locked down, and they're going to finish you off. So it's actually a very good reactive uh, support as opposed to Leona. It looks like they're going to trade towers at this point. Top one actually defended by Super Hot Crew. Yeah, and that was a lot of damage on Yogbook there, realizing, of course, that he's not a tank, and Mr. Rales does a hell of a lot of damage. He's gone for that Legolas build. Meanwhile, the Copenhagen Wolves, they're pushing down this bottom lane, but Impaler and Mima should have enough to defend them in stack. They might even go aggressive. They're going to jump onto Kaltan. He's going to see moves coming in. The bomb 
Bomb doesn't quite do the damage, but Grand Skyfall may well do. Kaltan's going to run for his life. It's going to be unlimited. They focus on. He turns it around. Heartseeker manages to get the damage down. Mimo gets himself a kill. Meanwhile, this is all happening. Mr. Rales gets himself a kill in Youngbook at the top lane and takes the tower. It is all going Super Hot Crew's way. 6,000 gold lead, and Moops actually pushed Unlimited closer to uh, uh, Impaler's Pantheon. They're using the Satchel Charge. And Limit is trying to get away. Now, Amazing does have Assault and Battery up, but he can't pick a fight. That's a Bloodthirster Last Whisper. We'll see how much damage he takes in return. Yeah, they just turn around and fight this one. Great point blank Dark Bind in there as well from Mixer, who's actually been landing them very well so far. Got himself boots and mobility on a Morgana support. Yeah, why not? And, and again, similar thing. You want to throw Soul Shackles and get in range. This was the kill that we missed up in the top lane. My guess is a Dark Binding hits, yep. and then just Mr. Riles hammers away. That just looked too easy, actually. It's, it's very easy, and that's the danger of obviously taking a trundle. You know, no tank stats on him right now. Went for that Blade of the Rune King, so simply he can't leech any hit points because he's doing it on an AD carrying a support. What I also like about the decision here from Super Hot Crew is, yes, they were defending their top tower, but they put their AD carrying support up against Young Buck, who's got a Negatron cloak. Yeah. It's too physical, da you know, physical damage from Caitlyn just to help negate that uh, defensive item that Young Buck had picked up. So, pretty good play here from the Super Hot Crew. You can actually see Mixer once again trying to roam around. He's going to find himself running into Kaltar in just a moment. So, he's got to be a little bit careful here. The Copenhagen Wolves do finally respond. They get that top tower. It was incredibly low. Mixer doing a good job taking down that pink ward. Very dangerous play from him. The Copenhagen Wolves were moving in on this now. Well, yesterday, so let's focus on what Copenhagen Wolves did. They were in a similar situation against Fnatic, a far more experienced and super hot crew team, and they managed to combine themselves. However, they're fallen 5,000 go hold behind. They're only about three, maybe 2,000 at the max time against Fnatic. And super hot crew, you know, they're feeling the snowball and they're really pressuring. Copenhagen Wolves. Yeah, Super Hot Crew can't afford to make the same mistake Fnatic made oh, by ooh. picking a fight that'll go wrong. Super Hot Crew are quite powerful right now. It looked like something was going to happen. Teleport was not available from either of the top laners, but instead, Super Hot Crew back away. That was over just a Wraith camp. Nice, and the hole being used on Unlimited. That's going to force him away. They do clear out the pink ward as well in that bush, and now everyone's going to rotate towards this top lane. Youngbook, he can't seem to go head-to-head -head with Mima right now. Tries to manage to back away. The rest of the Copenhagen Wolves trying to come around. They know that there's a potential split off here, but the Super Hot Crew already on this tower and doing work on it. Look at Mr. Riles just hammering it down. Moops is going to come around. That tower's going to drop any second. There it is. Windwall goes out, but it's going to be nothing. That's going to wow. be a five-man Mega Inferno bomb, and that's going to be a gain. Mixer going in, popping that ultimate, stunning everyone from the walls. They are dropping like flies. Mr. Riles cleaning up a great explosive there, and Forgiven goes down. It's a triple kill for Mr. Riles. Hashtag LC. Yes, big plays. That was the moment. The first pick, Caitlyn, is 6, 0, and 3. Mr. Rawls is doing a fantastic job of controlling this game. Super Hot Crew have turned the aggression up. They realized the tower was undefended, grouped up for it, and as soon as they got the tower, they initiated the fight. Once again, Mixer's Soul Shackles being so impactful during the course of the battle. And Kautod, I really don't think this Yasuo is having any form of impact or slowing Super Hot Crew at all. A 22 minute inhibitor going down and like you say hashtag big plays there moves five man mega inferno bomb that's what you want to be landed on great teamwork from super hot crew compared to yesterday they didn't quite seem to have the decisiveness the decision making maybe they're just the confidence they gained from beating sk gaming has certainly stepped them up here because now they have a nine thousand gold lead and an inhibitor down they are well in control of this game very interestingly at 23 minutes on the clock if they were to go for something like a Baron, they would need Mima with them to tank it up. There's not a lot of armor or defensive stats across the rest of the board. A little bit on Mixer, uh, Moops rather, but I think Super Hot Crew have the option now to set up a ring of wards. They've got three sweeping lenses they've had for a while, deny vision from wolves, and pull the wolves towards them. If you can pull the wolves towards them that super minions are then in the base, you can just peel, re-engage, and pick a fight. Well, we do see Super Hot Crew with 20 seconds on the clock, moving into position for that dragon. They are a wee bit early, maybe they're going to try and steal away the blue buff, sweeping lenses going down, making sure there's nothing in there, getting full vision control. Something, again, they were lacking yesterday. Yeah, it, I think if you go back and look at the VOD, it was very apparent. They didn't have enough wards, they didn't really deny their opponent's vision. And it's actually a fairly easy fix. You talk about it, you discuss who's going to be buying wards and at what point. And if you look at the ring of vision now, Dragons just respawned and there's a lot of entry vision towards that pit. So if Super Hot Crew start this one off, 
They'll be well aware of the Wolves' positioning, and there you go. Impaler's going to pull it. The rest of the team's able to respond. Mime is even split-pushing, keeping Forgiven busy. And this is one of the big things. Impaler is happy right now on Pantheon. This is what we found. When he was playing Vi, it was working wonders. Super Hot Crew winning games. He finds himself a new champion, finally, which he's been struggling with over the time. Suddenly, their shot call is seemingly Impaler. has suddenly feeling good, he can make the calls. He's 2-0-3, working well. Super Hot Crew also just completely outlaned the Copenhagen Wolves. Yes. Uh, you know, Mima held even with Young Buck. He was actually ahead for a little while. Uh, you know, Moops has stayed even on CS Kautzard. has had very little impact. And then Mr. Rolls and Mixer, from the very get-go, from that first blood, have been doing work. A lot of attack damage on Mr. Rolls, Caitlyn. So this tower's going to drop. That's Young Buck, who's meant to be semi-tanky, loses a third of his HP from that ace in the hole. It's not enough armor. He's desperately trying to get the Warden's Mail, trying to prevent anything. But look at this. Minions pushing on towards the Nexus turret in that top lane. And again, Super Hot Crew starting to push on towards the bottom inhibitor turret now. And honestly, I'm not too sure whether the Copenhagen Wolves can fend this off. Super Hot Crew got such a good sieging team with the range and Caitlyn and the poke from Ziggs. It makes it fairly safe to poke it. First Nexus turret has already fought thanks to Super Minions. And it's also taken, look, a third of the hit points already off the second one. Couch, forgiven, sorry, is doing a, as much as he can to try and defend it, but he needs to get down here now because Super Hawk Group continue pushing. It's too early in the game for Jinx's damage to actually fend off that many Super Minions. That's why it took so much time to fight it. It's also the reason I think they pulled Kautar to defend the tower as opposed to leaving Jinx there. There's more attack damage on Jinx so she can in theory, hold it off just a little bit longer. And the pressure gives them the blue buff as well to, to take everything away. Can they try and set up a kill? You can see Mime, he's sticking around. There is a ward, however, just off at the side that they can't see, which is giving Copenhagen Wolves just that little bit of vision they require. And look at that, blue buff for Moops. Let's go back and keep the pressure going. Just keep sieging, keep throwing out those bouncing bombs. The super minions are about to push past that inhibitor line in the top lane, and that's what Super Hot Crew are looking for. Get the minions in and then push forward. Even Windwall, that was late, and it's got about 20-odd can cool down, so there's this little respite now for Super Haku to spam more abilities. Far too late, Ace in the hole again, chunking Young Buck down. Now they're going to move in. Are this inhibitor turret surely going to drop this time around. They're going to keep the pressure on. They're cool Young Buck. on towards Young Buck. There's the Mega Inferno bomb, gets one, and Limited also having to back away while this is all happening. Forgivers desperately trying to keep the Nexus turrets alive. That is going to be the inhibitor turret going down. A pounce onto Amazing. Amazing tries to dash away from this one. Kaltar trying to run, trying to clear the minions, saving the Nexus turret briefly because the inhibitor turret. It has spawned in the top, so the inhibitor did, but that's the bottom inhibitor going down. What? Timbers coming out from Unlimited, catches five members of Super Hard Crew. They're dropping like flies. Kautar finally starts to get himself one, gets himself two, jumps around. Moops is going to get caught out. Amazing's going to beat him down. He's going to get the support once again of Unlimited chasing in on him. Has he got enough? Moops flashes away. Hasn't going to have the mana to try and regen on this one. He's going to get caught once again. The team's closing in, gives us the explosive pack. Will get away, but Copenhagen Wolves, they're running for Baron. That was a four-man final breath from Kautar after me calling him out saying I'm not convinced so far. He mass manages to get a massive ability, holding Super Hot Crew up in the air. The problem is the damage is done. Inhibitor is down on the bottom lane. They've lost the Nexus turret. They're trying to fight Baron, and maybe they can stall this game out. Baron's going down. Mima is going to need to pull a hero defense if he grabs this. What infected cleaver could he throw out here? Yeah. I don't think it's going to quite land. It doesn't come through. And the Copenhagen Wolves, would you believe it, after yesterday, get themselves a Baron. Still 10,000 gold behind. They've got two inhibitors basically exposed. There's only the two turrets left on the map for them. This has to be a superhero defense for the Copenhagen Wolves because Super Hot Crew, they're not stopping. Wolves are trying to recall, and Hot Crew, they want the last inner turrets. Rushing straight on through. Oh, not going to quite take Unlimited down. The rest of Copenhagen Wolves separated from this one, and this may well be another inhibitor turret going down. It will be, and the Super Hot Crew react perfectly and take their final defensive turrets down. This is going to be so difficult for Copenhagen Wolves to defend. They do have Baron though, so they've got a lot of fighting stats and regen to hold off extended sieges. But they've got no turrets to fall back to, so they don't have that safety net or that safety line to hold on to. So the question for Super Hot Crew, can they catch somebody off guard? Can they get a dark binding and pop someone quickly? Because that could be their way into a, a, a victorious team fight. Ooh, let's slow things down here. Let's take stock of the situation. And as you mentioned, 10,000 gold lead, nine two in turrets. Pretty much taking everything away. One singular nexus turret, the only thing standing. Let's look at the items because Kautar had to switch. Ordinarily, you'd see Static Shiv Infinity, uh, Infinity Edge. Instead, he had to go for that Hex Drinker because they had nothing to stop Moops just shredding the team and Mixer getting in and stunning everyone. Copenhagen Wolves needed like power now. 
which is the reason you see that pickaxe and vamp Sept and hex drinker you know kautzard has only got two towers to work with they haven't really got sniffs of the, the dragons they, they haven't been on the super on side of the map at all really you know for the last 15 20 minutes they've been playing defensively and trying to hold off the super hot crew siege with teleport being up for mima i think super hot crew have to start the split push game get the waves pushing in their favor get them knocking on the inhibitors and then quickly rotate to one where uh, uh, they'll have a numbers advantage on the walls well, don't forget with that baron up with those super minions pushing through on that bottom lane it will actually give a chunk of gold to the players that need it, and it is forgiven. He's starting to stack out, and as you point out, Infinity Edge now is built. So it's a little bit later than we're used to seeing on the Yasuo's, and he's got, like, I think a 90% uh, critical hit range now, so thanks to his passive. There's a lot of bursts that can come down. There is, however, a fair amount of armor on the side of Super Hot Crew. You've got Mo uh, uh, Mima, Impaler, and Moops all sitting with a good amount of armor. Even Mixer has got himself that Warden's Mail. So we'll see how effective it becomes when the fights break out. Well, Countout will wipe out this top wave. Static Shiv, no problems there. So Static Shiv, Infinity Edge, he will start popping them down. Dragon's about to spawn any second. It's there, guys. Trust me. Trust me, it is there, but they're just going to wipe it out. Good old Invisible Dragon. There he drops. So, Super Hot Crew continue their advantage. Wisely not pushing into a Baron up Copenhagen Wolves here. They will take their time and will continue to buy items. So that's four out of four Dragons now for Super Hot Crew. Copenhagen Wolves have not been able to challenge, and I think having three inhibitors exposed, they're not going to be able to move outside their base without having a massive amount of vision. We need to see two things being purchased on all members for the Wolves. They have to get Home Guard boots, and they have to buy wards so they can get, uh, you know, wall vision. They can't run the risk of being backdoored or losing an inhibitor to Super Hot Crew. And you talk about vision, there's not a lot of vision for Zoo Park Crew right now, and nobody went back and bought wards there either. So they're not going to have massive control just yet. So Copenhagen Wolves actually have better vision on the, certainly their half of the jungle than Super Hot Crew will. Yeah, they need it as well. You know, having no towers to fall back to, th there is no room for error. Copenhagen Wolves are going to be, you know, st striding a, a, a knife blade. We do see them trying to set up, looking to catch somebody, but I don't think Super Hot Crew are going to become split up enough for Copenhagen Wolves to pick that fight. Well, they're in a four-man dance. It's going to be amazing. Oh, actually sidestepping there. Not too sure Mime is going to be too worried about that with his uh, Randian's Omen. Warmogs and Sunfire Cave just quite happy to stand and watch the jungler try and hit him. He's only got 4,000 hit points. I'm not sure it's enough yeah. on this Dark the window. But now, thanks to the power that Super Hot Crew have, Baron has worn off on the Copenhagen Wolves. They're going to siege the inhibitor. And like we said, there's no tower to fall back to. So the Wolves, if they want to get a fight, they have to look for Super Hot Crew to be grouped up as a team and get that combo of Tibbers plus Final Breath, etc. You know, I don't think I've seen once Kautard land that wind wall and actually block one of those ace in the holes that keep on coming through. Copenhagen Wolves tried to use that talisman to chase this one down. The Super Hawk crew reacting nicely. They're going to jump on Amazing, course him away. The Zap once again, keeping it at bay, but it's going to be unlimited getting caught out here. Mime is going to keep on pushing through Mega wow. Inferno Bomb, catching four members of the Wolves once again, and that frees up the side to take the inhibitor. Yeah, that, that Mega Inferno Bomb was all that the Super Hawk crew needed. They traded coin, uh, uh, Talisman of Ascension for Talisman of Ascension when Copenhagen Wolves tried to pick the fight, but Amazing, he didn't use Assault and Battery. He still has it available, as is the final breath. Copenhagen Wolves need to decide to fight because they have fended off that inhibitor. It looks like it's still alive, so at least they hold on to one, but not necessarily for much longer. Super Hoku doing a great job at kiting Copenhagen Wolves away. We already saw Youngbuck down to half hit points. He's had to back to the fountain, so still only four members defending right now as Super Hot Crew push back in. They want to take down that second inhibitor. They just can't get close enough to it yet. Super Hot Crew are doing a good job in not stacking up. They're not allowing multiple members to get caught out by that knock-up final breath combo. So as long as Super Hot Crew can maintain this, it'll work in their favor. The Mega Inferno Bomb is not available for moves yet. And I think what they'll do is wait for it to become available, then go in, throw it on the bomb, and try pick up another inhib. Moop's actually getting caught out by not taking away the final uh, lizard there this time around. So he went for blue buff and went, oh, I forgot to clear it last time, <laughs> didn't I? So that's kind of actually backfired on himself. But nevertheless, the Mega Inferno Bomb will be back available in a few moments. Of course, everybody on Copenhagen Wolves has regened all their health, so Super Hot Crew simply sieging this one out. Yeah, Super Minions are now getting closer to joining that mid uh, uh, mid lane. So if they manage to get to the Nexus turret, Copenhagen Wolves will have to respond, and that's going to be where Super Hot Crew get in. It is still 50 seconds away from Baron, so even if this Siege doesn't necessarily grab the Inhibitor, 
Super Hockey could back away and go for that Baron Buff. Inhibitor's going down, they're jumping on Mr. Riles. They tried to get on towards him, but they're not going to get close enough. Amazing goes in, but he's so low on hit points already. Have they got enough? Mr. Riles trying to kite him. Yes, he does. Gets taken down by Kowtow. Now he switches on towards Moose. Can he lock him down? Soon Zonya's Hourglass comes out, but again, it's Copenhagen Wolves that are just chopping through Super Hot Crew. They've got four members already. Mimer's the only man standing. Runs for his life. This Super Minions and the Nexus turret, though. Copenhagen Wolves have to back away. They've lost the turret. Copenhagen Wolves now have no objectives left in the map with the exception of those inhibitors. And the Nexus turret taking damage as well, but it will get cleared out by Copenhagen Wolves. But again, we see them winning out a team fight. That's got to be a big danger sign for the Super Hot Crew. There are still Super Minions going down the middle lane. So if Super Hot Crew can respawn and respond quickly for Baron, maybe, maybe they can get there. Copenhagen Wolves are aware of this and they're actually pushing for Baron themselves. Young Black started this one off, I think, once Forgiven gets in range with that rocket launcher over the wall. They may have enough damage to pick it up. Yeah, you see Mimer just sticking around. That's going to be two members spawned. Don't forget Grand Skyfall is available from Impaler. He could jump on this one and try and go for the smite still. We don't have a Amazing yet here, so Smite is not available for the Wolves. He's going to start running into distance. It's Mimer so keeping slow. vision. This is very slow down. Look in the bottom corner. You can see the hit points of that Baron, and now it's going to be Super Hot Crew coming in. Grand Skyfall comes in there, and Forgive has gone down. They're going to have to run for their life. They're going to switch and go for Baron. Amazing's going to come in. Can he go for the steal now? Mimer's going to tank this one out. There's going to be have to go for it any second now. They're going to delay. They've delayed it so they can go for Amazing. Amazing is tanking the Baron. This is all going wrong for him. He's going to have to try and get away. Assault Battery goes into one. He does manage to get down Mixer, Amazing's gonna get dropped low, he goes down, it's back and forth action, Mr. Rallis is in trouble, he's got Youngman beating him down, but the rest of the walls have fallen, and the Super Hot Crew get an ace! They've done it, there's a teleport into the inhibitor, Mimer's on the Nexus, Super Hot Crew beating the Wolves! What a game, back and forward action for the Super Hot Crew, they sure made a lot of work of it with the advantage they had, but it will be a great week for the Super Hot Crew, taking their second Victory in week three, and the Super Hot Crew finally close out the game, taking down the Copenhagen Wolves. 2-0 on the week, and that was a brilliant performance. I was very nervous about that first pick, Caitlin. I wasn't sure if that was the right call, and they proved me wrong. 8-3-7 and seven on Mr. Rawls. Pantheon has to be a must man now against Impaler because that was a, a great performance. 5-1-10 as well for Moops, a great six from him. The Mega Inferno Bombs multiple times landing on four or five members of the Copenhagen Wolves. From the get-go, I think Super Hot Crew, that was a very similar performance to what we've seen in the previous game from SK Gaming. They won the lanes, translated to mid-game strength, and then just, they, they closed quite efficiently. Yes, Kautod had two very good team fights, but overall, they were, it was just too late. He needed those fights earlier in the game. He needed them on the roams or on the gags. And it just wasn't there for the members of Copenhagen Wolves. And for the Wolves, you know, we talked about how Fnatic maybe have focused on Rocket yesterday and then turned on towards a tough, tough battle up against Fnatic. But the Copenhagen Wolves themselves, maybe they focused a little too much attention on Fnatic and didn't really give the respect to Super Hot Crew that they deserved. We heard it during the interview. Young Buck saying, you know, maybe we've been a little overconfident. We've seen it in the preview match video, saying, you know, Super Hot Crew do this wrong, Super Hot Crew do this wrong, Super Hot Crew At some point you're gonna say, well, what did we do wrong? Where did we lose the game? Because I feel like Super Hot Crew just outclassed opening Wolves in this game. In this game, it was Super Hot Crew outplaying. They landed the abilities they needed to, they picked the fights that were correct, and they made it work. Mixer getting that first blood, helping out Mr. Riles in that bottom lane, dark binding landing. So many big plays. What, what was yours in that one? I mean, we oh, talk about it, the top lane, that okay. top lane fight, surely. I, uh, I'm going to be honest. I actually think the four-man final breath from Kautzad's Yasuo, when he was defending mm. on the inner lane, got the knock-up, got four members of the Super Hawk crew. That is the best Yasuo ultimate I have seen in the LCS, and I think that has to be, that has to be a hashtag LCS big play. Fantastic game, fantastic matches, and of course, there is two more to come.